Join. There we go. Okay. okay. Okay, much better. Now I have a huge uh, dashboard of you guys. How many are we here? One, two, three, four, five. Twenty-five in this screen already. And there's no, just three sixty people. In in total, we are sixty people. Sixty. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What a turnout, man. <laughs> because cool. of you. Thanks to you. <laughs> I love your background. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in Malibu now. <laughs> so you can. You can you can come visit me. You can just click on the virtual background and you can visit me. Probably problem. on space. Sorry, Hassan Air is in space. He's uh, yeah he's yeah. Enough. Yeah, there are a few people. people. Are Some people are. I in. usually use my own uh, background as a background image, <laughs> but I didn't do it for this one. Okay. Oh, okay. Usan, tell me, how is your class going? How did you cope with uh, this new world order with this online uh, classes? Is it uh, productive uh, enough? I, I think actually it's, it's good for me, but we need to ask the students. Last week, the, they were pleased with the class. And uh -huh. it's, it's, it's much more easier for everyone, I guess, to, yeah. uh, to, to, to arrange everything. And actually you have uh, lots of things to talk about it because I remember when we met each other more than three years ago you were telling me that you created the company you created a different kind of company and then in, in this company you are traveling all around the world and you are still uh, working with all other people and you don't know uh, where and uh, what your employees are uh, doing so you are riding in Colorado some other people in Afghanistan some other people in America so you designed the company just yeah. Uh, so actually, your company is Corona Proof, Corona Proof <laughs> Company. Exactly. So, now everyone is trying to do the same thing. Yes, everyone is trying to do the same. So can you please give a little bit of background of your uh, company, how you designed it, so what uh, what it does, and what others can learn from you, actually? Okay, uh, guys, for those who doesn't uh, know or who doesn't remember, uh, I am the co-founder of Binaz and Faladin. Uh, Binaz is a, a fortune telling marketplace and there is a different type of fortune tellers and psychics that you can enjoy Turkish coffee, Torka, reading, astrology, and palmistry, etc. And Faladin is the artificial intelligence uh, fortune teller. It's free and we monetize on uh, the advertisements. So uh, I have a corporate background. I worked for Ernst & Young Consulting for seven years in Dubai and Singapore offices respectively. And in 2012, I quit. And I started uh, my first uh, entrepreneurial project, Binaz. Uh, Binaz is my mother. And uh, it all started with my mom's fortune telling uh, hobby. So then it started to scale up with different readers joined and uh, basically it became like a hub. And after I quit Ernst & Young, I was in Singapore and my partner was in the uh, United States. So it was just me, him being the co-founder, CTO, and we only had uh, just one site administrator, let's say, and my mother was doing the readings. So then we had the DNA in the very first place that we had no offices, we had no computers, like lying down big huge uh, assets lying down in the office, no materials, nothing. So it was just a virtual concept, runs on the cloud and everything was like from finances to marketing, it was digital. And then, well, um, it's, it, it continued like this for at least five, six years straight with no office. Eventually, when I came back to Turkey in 2016, I, uh, then I realized, you know, either I work uh, at Starbucks or sometimes my home, sometimes I don't know where. But then I started to realize, we, you know, we have developers in Turkey and we like to spend time together. So we started to go to Collective House 
as a nomad uh, member, so we didn't have any space yet. In 2017, we just rented a very small, like smallest offices. We, we were like maybe 14 people by then, but only three, four of us were coming to the office. And well, more people wanted to come down to the office and then from becoming a virtual digital nomadic company, we started to become like any other company, which is like you go to the office every day and you want to see people in the office and maybe at one stage, I honestly thought, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, why I turned this magical, amazing formula into the old world again? Why I want my people in the office? The reason was, okay, it's, 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 it sounds amazing when you are uh, conceptualizing the idea of you travel the world and everyone's working remotely, but you, you miss an essence. Like we all do in these days, we are at home, we're working, but we miss each other. We miss hugging each other, we miss, you know, high-fiving each other, we miss, hey, you know, sharing a joke with each other in the physical space. So we realized that the, the, the magic formula for us, for our company, was a balance between being virtual and being physical. So we sometimes go to the office, but sometimes we don't. And there is not a mandatory rule that you had to. You just go there if you want to. I think that was the best case. You have a beautiful office. You go there voluntarily. You just don't push people go there. And it was so much fun. I go there even today, guys. Like, I go to office every day. Hey, stay, stay at home. Work from home. Yeah, it, it's shameful. I know it's not good to promote. I'm not promoting this, please stay home, but I just can't help myself to go to office because I love my friends. I would rather have a fucking Corona, but I want to spend time with my people. The reason is, I mean, I'm just exaggerating a bit just to make things a bit more clear. Obviously, we just need to stay home. However, we as a company started, uh, like I said, a bit more physical and then the Corona had, they said, oh, sir, well, we just need to close down the office. Collective House said, hey, uh, we probably closed down and uh, everyone is staying home. We should promote uh, virtual offices. Exactly the moment where we started our office culture. I said, okay, that may be a message from God. So don't make a mistake. Go back to your virtual days we were already accustomed to. So what we are currently experiencing is this. We are so ready to it because we have been doing this for many years. And I tell you what, virtual office doesn't necessarily mean that you are on a Zoom call. Doesn't necessarily mean that you are just using uh, Skype calls or um, you know, you, you're, you're, you're on Slack, uh, and etc. It's a, a philosophy. Whether or not you're using Zoom, it's not going to happen the other day that you become a virtual company. All the other big companies like, you know, you name it, uh, the multinationals, FMCGs, they say, okay, you go home and now we are a home office concept. Please download Zoom, please go to Slack, please do this, please do that. It's not going to make a virtual company the, day, the next morning. It, it, it's about the idea how you perform, how you work things out in your brain with your co-founder. Sometimes I still have a difficulty, for example, to work with my designer because, you know, design is very physical. I, I just need to see it. Well, maybe he needs to sit with me and I just need to tell him, oh, can you make it a little bit more brighter and a little bit more reddish? And then the guy's going to say like, okay, man, let's go have a coffee and then we'll decide it later. Just you can't do this in Zoom. How did we do it before then was the idea how you empower people. It's about empowering people. It's about you find the best resources so that you don't need to sit together and decide on a fucking color. You just know this guy knows his shit and then he needs to do his part at any given time and he needs to finish it at a certain time and he needs to give the other person. It's not about the Zoom call. We, honestly speaking, we never had a Zoom call for the past eight years. This is the first time we also, because it became so popular, 
that we use Zoom. We were using Google Hangouts and just maybe once a week. We were just talking to each other in any, any sort. We were more of a Slack company, so we were on Slack. But then Zoom boomed and everyone thought it's just a new world. We said, okay, let's try. But uh, being virtual is just philosophy, is how you design your company, how you design that specific people. Some people work at midnight, some people work like 7 a.m. in the morning, but it just works like a, uh, like a train. It's like, a, uh, you know, it's like a locomotive, every, every, everything just follows each other. It just falls onto each other, let's say. Uh, for us, it's, it's a smooth, smooth transition and we're happy to continue in a certain uh, way. We probably have, again, when the things get better, go back to half office, half virtual concept. And it's not going to be mandatory. It's never going to be a mandatory come down to the office in our DNA or in our culture. But uh, my dream is create a space that people are willing to go there instead of going to a Starbucks or instead of staying home. They want to go to my office because it's so much fun. Uh, Sertaş, uh, actually, I would like to ask, what do you think about this online uh, teaching? Actually, for us, I mean, for me as a professor and for the students. Actually, we I, uh, we also created a select group for this course, so everyone creates a select channel for their group projects, and also we are using online tools. So, what what do you suggest to students and what do you suggest to professors? How to how to how to get this philosophy? I think, you know, universities are not just a place that you learn things, it's also being part of a community. Uh, online learning has been there forever. There's huge billion dollar companies. One of them is, is, is the Turkish entrepreneur uh, Udemy. So you can just go and learn things. This, for me, is the future of learning, that's for sure. I don't think we learn like hardcore knowledge in universities anymore as we expected to. We learn things online. We don't have to even watch, uh, like we don't have to even read books anymore in these days. Who does read book? Like honestly speaking, people used to tell in their CVs that uh, what's your hobby is reading books. Now everyone's hobby became watching Netflix or I don't know, surfing the internet. That's how you grab information. So the future of learning is already changed and the concept of universities are maybe the vanishing. But, like I said, we are all sociable animals and we need to socialize. That's why we need a space. That's why we need a, a university campus. That's why you go to the, the school to play basketball with your mates or play tennis in, in the campus or just hang out with your friends with a beautiful Bosphorus view. That's where you develop your Bosphorus. That's where, where you develop your Bosch University culture that makes you this person. It's not maybe the class that you go and learn from your university instructor, but also it's like a mix of between the getting the knowledge from any source. In this case, I think easily can be converted into uh, online learning, plus the societal, uh, the cultural aspect that you still need to gather up as human beings and socialize and learn and teach each other. Um, we, in this, even this call, there's 60 people, we are socializing. Yes, I, I can understand that. But there is certain, there is certain limits. I think, let's say, half of it is, is gone in, uh, in the cloud. So I would rather have, like I said, a, a beautiful formula between online learning and sharing humanly uh, cultural activities in, in, in a physical space. So as, a, as, as, an, as an entrepreneur, okay, how would, you, how would you design online learning? So from your entrepreneurial experience, so as an entrepreneur. So if, if you were the professor, how would you do it? So I can learn from you. <laughs> also, I would probably learn from you, my friend. Um, so, like, in our company, the learning is, has always been a challenge. Basically, even now, we, I just literally spoke to somebody like 15 minutes ago about English literature and English uh, culture or, or speaking practice for my people. Uh, I was speaking to uh, a teacher. So he said, hey, well, he can organize Zoom calls in this given circumstances. Um, 
Well, I think learning uh, from the teacher's side, from the instructor's side, can also be um, in different ways rather than just getting everyone together in Zoom. Like uh, my friends, we uh, gather up in different platforms in these days. One of them is uh, House Party. I'm not sure if you guys use House Party. It's so much fun. So sometimes I just wake up and the same guys that I, I met yesterday on a Zoom call in a different format is there in House Party this morning. And then we just go do physical exercise, gym classes in House Party, with like three, four minutes of hours. We go uh, count the push-ups. We go like one, two, three, four. Like, because it's part of my life. I go to the gym every day. Now I just can't go to the gym every day, but we meet up every morning in house party and then we share that moment. So if I was the instructor, yes, I can gather up everybody in Zoom call, but I would also organize, uh, I don't know, like a football game. Uh, we play the stupid game in the company. Uh, you just can't remember the name. It's very stupid. It's like with pixels. But it works perfectly fine with any internet speed and any, any bad computer. My computer is MacBook Air. It's not so powerful for playing. But even my computer works that out. So we gather up. We open Meet, Google Meet, for, for, for uh, uh, voice communication. And you go like, Ulsan, you give me the ball. Oh, you, you passed me. No, you, you, you missed the shoot, you idiot. So, you know, we are almost like in a virtual uh, bubble and we share a moment as if we're in the campus playing football. I know it's not the same thing, but it works. So if I was the instructor, I would uh, create different spaces, virtual spaces for different occasions. One could be Zoom for your, uh, you know, for, for classes and maybe gather up everybody for a more house party-ish uh, organization to play games or maybe, hey, organize a football game or counter-strike tournament I don't know what girls play, but uh, you know, there's always like some appealing part for every uh, cultural lesson. So we gather up in different uh, occasions. So actually you put so much emphasis on the socializing part. So while we are online, we, we should make sure that uh, we socialize enough. Well, you know me because probably I am, I am this guy because I'm a sociable person and I crave that uh, and I crave that sociable uh, activity. However, there are people who are not that sociable and maybe they're totally and completely okay with being home and uh, with this quarantine concept. Uh, um, for them, maybe it's, it's, it's perfectly fine situation. I can only uh, you know, answer that question on my behalf. So actually from my side, I mean, uh, I think since this Corona outbreak, I'm since in the last you know, one month, I'm talking to more people than I was talking before. Yeah, right? Exactly. I used to go from, you know, a place to place, from conference to conference, city to city. Now, honestly speaking, every day my schedule is as full as before, from webinar to webinar, from Zoom call to Zoom call, from house party to house party. I'm like, dude. <laughs> We had to stop for a while and just, you know, have that very sad moment at home. You have your tea, listen to the music. No, it just really doesn't happen. Everybody is crazy on, uh, for some reason, like this online meetup things. But if it continues to go further for another two, three months, I think it's, it, people is going to get over it. I think it's, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to get connect uh, at Zoom at one stage. But in the near future, it might just get out of the fashion as well. I'm not sure. Yeah, we'll see. So, yeah, yeah. But, but I think uh, actually one of, one of the project groups is actually is working on an uh, app idea, which helps people to uh, socialize as well. So we will need more innovative stuff to socialize online because it seems like it will be longer than anticipated. And if it is inevitable, then everyone needs to uh, feel good about it. We need to find ways to feel good about it. True, true. And it's like I said, now in these days, every app has a social uh, side. Come. You go to Instagram, people call each other on Instagram in these days. Like you can video call me on Instagram. And, I, and then you go to the WhatsApp chat with the same person. And then this person also texts you on uh, Google meets and emails you and then sends you a message on LinkedIn. You're like 
same person in every different social environment. Same and, person with, with different identities. <laughs> yes, with different identities. So sometimes you don't know what to say from which platform. Uh, it's good not to mix uh, Tinder with LinkedIn, but uh, I, I keep hearing weird stories about people writing each other in, uh, in a flashy manner in uh, also in LinkedIn or professional environments. These, these lines are getting blurry. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, is there anyone who would like to ask questions? So we are, we are chatting each other so we can go forever, but if there, if there is anyone. Imran, I think, the, uh, are you drinking Turkish coffee at the moment or? <laughs> I think she's going to show you the uh, coffee for the fortune. Um, you, can you, can actually, you can raise hands as well. Okay, Tunç, can, can you open the camera by the way? Okay. Yes. There is life. Um, so I wanted to ask, uh, if I got it wrong, you started your company first in Singapore, right? Uh, yes, exactly. And why did you decide to do it in Singapore rather than like your home country? Uh, back then I was living in Singapore. <laughs> That's probably the reason why I set up the company in Singapore. I was working for Ernst Young Singapore office. And uh, I, was, I was there and I was still working for EY. And when I wanted to open up a country, a company, I just uh, uh, physically opened there because it's also uh, tax-wise, it's very, uh, it's, it's, it's much more, let's say, smartly designed than any other country. And uh, they, they have incentives for technology companies, for startups. And it's, um, that's probably the reason. Okay. However, we also have a company in Turkey now. I mean... Uh, I, I hear you. I, well, we're Turkish entrepreneurs, and why would why would we associate ourselves with uh, non-Turkish uh, locations? Uh, I hear you. Uh, now we have a company in Turkey as well. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? I think Imran is so excited, so she cannot. In which page? Wait a second, Imran. Yeah, actually, you can raise hands or you can write it into uh, chat. Uh, um, see Imran now. Okay, you can you, you can see her. Uh, okay, Sartash, Then, if, if no one is asking, I can I can keep asking questions. Uh, <laughs> okay. so in in the actually. Uh, during this corona uh, outbreak so what what uh, what what is the greatest challenge you have so you say i mean you are already prepared so i mean if it takes no, what's, my, uh, what's my challenge dude i uh, the other day uh, uh my mom said you know when they the when they first announced the uh, the curfew for the weekend she said it was like 10 p.m she said, oh, did you hear they, they, they just announced like the total lockdown for the weekend? I'm like, yes. She said, please go and buy this and this and this and this so you can just prepare some food for you. I'm like, sure. So I went there and I happened to find the market which is not very crowded, not like the ones famous somewhere like near the street. So I, I came back home and the next morning I realized I don't have a, a pot to make food. I don't have... <laughs> Cooking materials. Uh, although I had the ingredients, I don't have the cooking materials. So I called my mom, I said, hey, I have everything, but I don't have a pot. She said, for two years, you're in the, living in the same apartment, you don't have a pot. I'm like, no, I don't. So the, the challenge for me was uh, to find something that I could eat edible <laughs> for the weekend. <laughs> That's probably the challenge. So, you know, when you're relying on a lot of people, in a certain modern society, like for example, haircuts, like you can see me that I'm not shaving for, I don't know, maybe two weeks. And I usually go every four or five days to trim my beard. And now you realize as a, as a capitalist uh, economy that everybody relies on each other and you have to sustain this habit of spending stupid money on stupid things. Like every morning on weekends, you go eat uh, breakfast somewhere out. I mean, I'm not sure everybody does that, but most of us, they go to, you know, a place. 
And what you eat is just two eggs, side side up. <laughs> and, you pay, and you pay, I don't know how much, like 60, 70, it depends Crazy. on the price, 100 Turkish lira for food, two fucking eggs. And my mom is a very, uh, you know, kind of funny person of these things. And she says, oh, uh, how are you doing? Where are you? I'm like, hey, I'm in the breakfast. She said, uh, okay, what are you eating in that breakfast? And I say, oh, just, uh, you know, eggs and, and, and a toast. She said, how much did you pay for that? <laughs> you know, 100 lira for two people, even more. She said, are you crazy? Why don't you just crack two eggs, sit at home, make yourself a coffee and save your fucking money? I'm like, you're right. <laughs> you're right. And now we all experience... It's very doable to not to fall into this trap of going to the haircut every week, going to the gym class every week, having a gym membership. Listen, I have a gym here. Like, this is my uh, mat, and I have the dumbbells here. And I promise you, I do exactly the same exercises that I do in a gym. And you don't really need to spend that much of money uh, on that unforeseen uh, and mandatory spending. So it rings a bell that how we sustain ourselves as human beings. I understand that you don't have to save a lot for the sake of economy. So you don't want to go into a spending, uh, a saving uh, fashion like Japan at one stage in, in, in the 80s, 90s. So it's not really good for the economy. But then you question, why do we need to grow as human race? Why don't we just go harmony with, with, with animals or with, with nature? Look at it now. Look, if you go through the Bosphorus for a little walk, if you can, you see all these beautiful birds and seagulls and all that uh, creatures having in a peaceful harmony. I think we need to ask ourselves, how we uh, take economy and civilization as it is, or we need to rethink how we keep preserve the Earth's uh, resources, how we can make peace with uh, the animals and the, and the nature and ourselves, and instead of spending a lot of stupid money on stupid things like fashion, like, you know, this cars and show off ego, egoistic uh, desires and motives, we need to look at ourselves inside and just say, hey, you know what, I'm just one of those true living creatures rather than uh, the, the, you know, the most advanced uh, creature in the universe. No, we are not. We are the virus. We are the virus in this planet. And someone needs to remind us that, and that happened to be the coronavirus. So it's a beautiful, beautiful moment for everybody, uh, everybody to pause, to say, what did we do wrong and how can we make it better? I, but I know after a few, few, let's say weeks or, or months, once everything is, 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 is forgotten, we all gonna go rush out and go as bad, even worse than before. I hope it's not gonna happen, but I think it will. So uh, t actually, thank thank for bringing this up because I was also watching a video uh, by Bekir Arder today this morning. You know, he is the founder of Conda Research uh, Company. Uh, he has really good insights, and he is saying that actually many people say that the world will not be the same after coronavirus, which I uh, agree. But actually, most people say that, but not all of them uh, agree that how the world will look like. They people just say that it will be different. But Bekir Arder actually told something. Um, uh, different. I mean, he said that okay, the world will be different, but uh, there, there is a, there is another thing going on in the world at the moment. So, which is the world is trying to say us something uh, because the, 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 there are something else. The, there is also something else going on. Not only the uh, virus, the rhythm of the world is changing. Uh, the, yeah. So the, there was a, so us maybe uh, ten years. We were all to, always talking about this climate change problem. Uh, all those. Uh, sustainability problems now they are uh, appearing on the surface I mean, and uh, all of them together at the same time so we need to find a way to solve this problem so if you go back to our 
uh, old world that we all used to live in after the coronavirus, still we will uh, we can expect to live some other problems, say to like the forest problem in Australia or the fire in Ukraine or the Chernobyl problem or other. So every day we are also reading new problems. So all of them come together. So maybe it's just what the world is trying to say. So whatever we do, I mean, in the business, in entrepreneurship, in everything, whatever we do, I think it's time that we included the uh, social, sustainable and environmental uh, impacts of what we are doing. So you also, you were also talking, uh, talking about it from a capitalistic uh, perspective that people live just without uh, questioning, but uh, we'll see that uh, we need to make this work in our lives as well, in the businesses as well. And he also made a comment about the businesses. Many business people, many, many bosses, many corporations, they all think that their employees are at home and it's an opportunity for them to uh, to, to, to build self-improvement for, for them. And he's saying that that's a very limited view. So if you just think it as a self-improvement problem, so they have time, we need to keep them busy, let's uh, show them webinars, they can improve themselves. Instead, yeah. we, need to use, we need to use this time how the uh, how we can get prepared after the virus so it will pass anyway so it will pass in one month or six months or one year it doesn't matter i mean at the end of the day we will uh, so the, the virus will live it will pass but what happens then so it doesn't matter uh, it will be a different world so we need to get prepared it, uh, from today uh, by thinking more uh, by having a more uh, macro perspective of the world so that Imran has a question. Yes, Imran has a question. Imran, can you, okay, you can, you, you can, you can tell it, so we, we can read your question, but still, uh, we can see your face as well. Hocam, oh, I'm a really shy person, that's why I'm not talking so much. You are a shy person, okay, ask, ask it, okay, you are talking anyway. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Tashdera, what is your biggest passion in life? My biggest passion in life, and there's actually, uh, and what's the key behind your motivation as an entrepreneur? Um, well, my, well, you know, my passion is um, life itself. I love uh, everything about being alive, experiencing life, going out there, ex you know, exploring new people, new uh, locations, new music, new tastes. Uh, I'm just so passionate about learning uh, and my biggest motivation as an entrepreneur, the reason I became an entrepreneur is, uh, is freedom. I just uh, love the idea of, you know, you're you born free, uh, not necessarily with equal rights with everybody in the world. Uh, we're probably the selected lucky people who, uh, who happen to you know, born in a, in, a, in a civilized country with a decent education and uh, good families. However, um, you know, when you, you, when you start working, you, you start being part of the whole big system that we all in these days, like even now, uh, kind of criticized. Uh, and then I realized I don't want to be part of that. I want to be free in my thinking in my actions and I would be held responsible for what I do in life and uh, that's probably the, the key uh, motivation freedom I just want to be free I don't want to be judged I, I hate being told and I don't like uh, anyone to decide on my behalf I, I this is like my biggest motivation I just want to be free it's uh, so actually I mean just I would like to add a comment here I mean when we ask people What's your motivation to uh, to want to become an entrepreneur? And uh, actually, many people say that I don't want to get orders from anyone. Actually, to me personally, I don't agree this is a good motivation because I mean, if you, uh, I want to have my own business, I don't want to get orders. Uh, but you just said it's a freedom. So okay, I understand uh, what you mean, but uh, most of the most of the time. Uh, just I want to be the boss. I want to be decision maker. Uh, I don't want to get orders to anyone. So it doesn't lead you a good 
it doesn't make you a good entrepreneur at the end of the day. So yeah, can you, make you take a, a lot of orders can, from your customers or your people. <laughs> yeah. can, can you elaborate on that? True. I mean, yes. In my case, for example, I have a co-founder, I have uh, senior staff in my company and I have customers, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it seems like I don't take orders when you look at from the outside perspective. But when you go into a closer microscopic perspective, I also take orders. I mean, I'm not that free anymore. I am responsible for uh, my, my position in the company, for example. I have daily routine that I have to go through. I have emails that I have to reply. I have a co-founder that I'm responsible for. I am the, 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 the state I'm responsible for paying my taxes. Uh, so that responsibility is not like never gonna go away. Okay, let's go a bit more deeper. Why do I become an entrepreneur? There's also two uh, very humanly motivation. Uh, one of them is my family and my upbringing. Uh, my father is an entrepreneur, and I grew up uh, looking up to him. My grandfather is an entrepreneur, and I, I idolize him even now. Uh, my mom is, an, is a pharmacist, also considered as kind of entrepreneurship in Turkey because you're, uh, you know, you're, you're by yourself. Uh, it's like a corporation. And uh, in my company, uh, sorry, in my family, there are few people who work for the government, like uh, Memur in, in Turkish, like what we say. And it's always looked down, especially from my grandfather. If you are Memur, uh, he doesn't like you. <laughs> if you're if you're a to jar, if you're a business guy, if you are the guy who buys and sells things, you are the guy. Every man should learn how to uh, make uh, trade. trade the art of trade. So there are certain ways. He goes to the uh, shop every morning. You need to go there early. You need to. Just take care of everything, you need to know your numbers. That's probably one of the biggest motivations of my life that I become an entrepreneur because that's how I learn uh, from these people. I look up to this. Maybe it kind of bounds you as well. Maybe if everything is uh, started equal and we all born in a, you know, a deserted island, maybe few of us will become artists. Maybe few, few of us become sportsmen or athletes. But in Turkey, well, if you don't have musician families or, or, or poets or, I don't know, maybe uh, a, a big governmental uh, impact. So probably the reason is, is that. And second reason, I also believe the genetics plays a lot of part in uh, someone's upbringing and uh, character. Um, like, honestly speaking, uh, when I look at my father and I look at myself, there's a lot of similarities between how I see uh, how I approach business and not the reason that we grew up together because uh, my parents are separated when I was like six and I never grew up with him I never had to uh, opportunity to, uh, to, to, to watch him do business but now sometimes I, I do things in exactly the same manner and it's surprising it's not the reason of upbringing because I've never seen him doing it, but my, my genetics, the, re, the, 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 the way I wire uh, sociable interactions or the way I handle uh, problems or the way I handle crisis is pretty much the same with my own father and my grandfather. So yes, there is two different things. One of them is uh, genetics and the second one of them is also the upbringing. I have to agree with that. Can I ask you a question to Sartaj Tarsalan? This is the most asked question in my Instagram feed. Can I ask you a question? Okay. Yes. Asking this question, you can ask a question, I think. Okay, please ask. Utku. Hello, Sartaj Tarsalan. I want to ask a question to you. Sure. Uh, do you, you did a great app about fortune telling, but do you really believe in fortune telling? Yes, I 100% believe in fortune telling. Uh, I am a person driven by, uh, let's say, science and positive uh, way of looking at things. However, 
I see fortune telling as, um, as a phenomenon that could be explained by quantum physics one day, because what fortune telling is simply a person's ability to know the future, right? Let's say, uh, I always think about this, to be honest with you, I just can't explain with my current knowledge, the science cannot explain uh, with its current knowledge about the fortune telling, but let's say for example, me and you are with uh, another person sitting in Bosphorus, let's say Bosphorus uh, University, Bosch University. And there's another person next to us. This person is uh, blind from the very beginning. He doesn't see, he is born blind. And while we're watching the Bosphorus straight, we see, me and you, see the fireworks. You know, sometimes they do fireworks in Bosphorus for weddings. But we don't hear after a second or two, because it takes the, the speed of uh, voice, the speed of sound, sorry, takes at least two, three seconds. The exact moment when I see the fireworks, I will tell the blind, blind guy, I say, oh, the fireworks is going to crack. And he's going to say, how do you know? I say, I've seen it. He's blind. He doesn't know what seeing is. He doesn't know what's the experience of seeing it. And then two seconds later, he hears the sound of the fireworks. And then he goes like, how did you do it? How did you know that the fireworks is going to crack? And you tell him, I've seen it. He is blind. How are you going to explain a blind person about the concept of seeing? Imagine explaining seeing to somebody else. You're going to tell, oh, you know what? I have an organ which is on my face. I have actually two. And these are connected to my brain. And these organs, they reflect light from the objects. Oh, what's light? Oh, light, uh, la, 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 la. You know, light actually is, I don't know how to describe it. It's like a wave, but it's not really a wave. And then it bounces off from the things, and then it goes to that organ, and this organ detects this, and then converts this data, and then sends it to your brain, and then you see things. Dude, this is like a science fiction. Now imagine, I have the sixth sense, and I know things. How can I explain it to you? There is not really an explanation for it. Unless, Thank you. unless one day, one of us will discover, science will discover that that knowledge is somewhere that another uh, sensory organ could detect this. Like, uh, my, my, my approach to many things in life is not accepting or not, not accepting is approaching with uh, a certain methodology. And this methodology is this. I don't know. Let's talk about this. This could be about astrology. This could be about the God. This could be about the religion. This could be about anything in life. And everything is questionable. Everything should be questioned and should have, uh, should, should, should become a, a laying uh, perspective for a philosophical uh, debate. So in my case, fortune telling uh, is something that I love to debate and I think uh, I, 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 I'm more tended to accepting it rather than not accepting it. Perfect, thank you. Actually, I mean, I'm, I'm always amazed by the psychics. So I sometimes watch psychic videos on YouTube and also in some movies, I'm, I always try to understand. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's, it's so much interesting. And at the end of the day, what I come up with is when I learn their tricks, actually, it's all about human psychology. So it's all about manipulation, uh, actually. So when you know how people will react to it, so there's a hurt psychology. So people uh -huh. behave in terms of hurts, like sheep. So it's not so different. Many people think they are original, but at the end of the day, uh, we all react the same to same stuff. For example, there are some easy uh, puzzles. You ask people, think about the color and think about the tool. 
I I can say that with 99 point confidence, you are thinking about a red hammer. This is what 99 percent of the people think when you ask a color and ask a tool. Red hammer. So so there are some yeah. com commonalities between people, and I think the fortune tellers are also applying this kind of uh, human psychology. So they, they maybe they don't really know know by certain to like the example of thunder and uh, uh, sound, but they know they at least know statistically they at least know intuitively um, because of their well, observation behavior could be could be well that's like i said it's uh, something that um, i approach uh, carefully but uh, i would rather keep it as a fun concept to play uh, uh, with thoughts what's your biggest failure as an entrepreneur uh, my biggest failure as an entrepreneur. There are so many failures, uh, failing uh, examples and fun stories. Um, my biggest failure as an entrepreneur. You know what? Um, even now, thinking small. Uh, we're, we're not big enough, guys. We're not bold enough. We're always deemed uh, with limitations and on, on fears and uh, that personal... Uh, uh, fears like seriously what what did I do I just created a fortune telling app and I, I'm considered as successful thankfully in Turkey because there are few people uh, downloaded my app but we are still too small to play um, bigger impact in the world we just uh, I don't know, maybe the culture, maybe the people, maybe ourselves, maybe our own fears, maybe the fear of losing everything is, 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 is preventing you bet bigger. I, I think I don't have the biggest, uh, you know, power to go bigger yet. Um, we just, you know, at the start of our, hopefully start uh, of our big, big, big journey of entrepreneurship. It's been eight years, seven years. Uh, but I don't know. Should I have been bigger? Should I have been a billionaire company? Okay, okay Sartaj, then what, what, sets you, what sets you back? What is your biggest fear then? You know what? I was talking to like friends with the other day. I, I'm not sure. Maybe every one of us have that in a certain sense, not in a bigger or small, but in a certain way. Fear of losing. You know, uh, well, we are all human beings. Nobody wants to lose. Nobody uh, wants to be vulnerable or seen vulnerable even. Everyone's like so big and so powerful and so flashy. But when you go inside, everyone wants to keep what they have and not lose their own status quo. It's like, you know, if you want to risk bigger, you have to embrace the fact that you might lose everything. And, you know, coming from a, a decent but... Um, you know, a mid-sized income family. We, I never had the means of uh, spending extra cash on things. I even, I was yesterday with my friends. I, when I was living in Dubai, I was working for EY. And EY never pays good. And, well, my father is well-mannered, but I never had the chance to enjoy his wealth in a certain way. I was raised up with my mom, and she's a pharmacist. I, guys, I promise you, I used to wear a shoe with a hole under that in 2012, even like seven, eight years ago. I had no money, zero. Then my apps went well and I started to save some cash. But now, I, okay, I, I'm able to buy things that I desire or go places where I desire. But I always have that weird feeling of what if you lose everything? back what if you go back to this and i think it takes a certain courage to uh, you know maybe uh, have peace with that idea and you have the uh, you know sign of guts to ability to go bounce back that you can risk more but in turkey losing is everything once you lose everyone's gonna go ha ha on you everyone's like Oh, he's, he's bankrupted. I, I, we knew he's going to go bankrupt. Even when you start, people say, it's not going to work. It's not going to go successful. This guy's going to bankrupt. This idea is never going to work. So that's probably also the upbringing. Maybe uh, if, if we all born in, 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 in the Silicon Valley, 
when you say, hey, you know what, I want to go to Mars, people say, bravo, what a bold vision. But imagine saying, I want to go to Mars in Turkey, people say, you're a crazy person. When I said, hey, you know what, I want to create a file app, people said, you're crazy. Well, why are you going to do this? Are you crazy? It's not reputable. How we can go and tell our people that our son, I'm not talking about my mom and dad, they're all very supportive. They say my uncles and all these. They said, how we go and say people that my niece, my, my nephew is, uh, you know, or, or my, my relative is, uh, is Falji. And what's wrong with that? Here I am, I, I am that guy, and that, 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 that supports my life. So you embrace a certain uh, philosophical or, or psychological uh, barriers already. That's probably our biggest failure. We, 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 we drawn each other onto the, you know, the, 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 the failures or, or that kind of fears. When did you start uh, to be proud of yourself as an entrepreneur? and realize that you will succeed. Guys, I'm never proud of myself. Like seriously, I'm, I'm not that proud. I know I'm doing okay, uh, but we have way, way, way to go. When I compare myself with people, like we went to Stanford University this summer with me and my co-founder. And you know, well, we received some good feedback from our own society. We are the entrepreneurs, there's a small ecosystem and you know, people know each We sat with maybe another 60 people, like in this class. I mean, I met this guy who have, uh, who have raised $125 million for his fashion uh, company. And I just recently met someone who sold this company for $250 million. And then there's this guy, Lorena, created this medical company who makes 3D organs, or this company who makes this kind of scientific blah, blah, technology breakthrough. Guys, we, honestly speaking, we, we see each other or, or sometimes we are in this mirror that enlarges our own reality. So we just need to, okay, maybe you don't have to put yourself a lot of pressure, but you don't have to praise yourself a lot as well. So there is a healthy balance. So honestly speaking, I'm not proud of myself. I don't think I will ever be, by the way. Thank you. That was that was good. Actually, Sartaj, uh, we can finish in a few uh, minutes, so it's been almost an hour. Uh, so, do 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 you have do do you have a comment question or comment to the class? Guys, uh, probably this is is this the MBA class? No, this is the undergrad fourth year uh, international trade department. And okay, this is the fourth year. So that that's what that's that most most people graduate this semester. Okay. Well, my, my humble advice is always uh, summarized in five steps. One of them is starting with, please know yourself. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to be, please, first of all, think if that's something that you are enjoying doing, is something that you uh, was born to do that. If you want to become an artist, it's not too late please go and become a painter. If you want to become a 3D artist and work for a gaming company, please do so. Whether or not you're uh, you know, engineering student or you're a, you know, international trade student. And if you want to become an athlete, a wrestler, uh, I don't know, a bodybuilder, anything, just please think about it. Especially in these days when everyone is like locked down in, 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 in home. You're still like you're 19, 20 years old. There's a whole lot of years for your life. Please know yourself and ask these questions. What, 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 what do I want from this life? Second of all, please have big, 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 big dreams. Like we are so behind in dreaming. Uh, especially when you were kids, we dream bigger. But at this age, I think it just kind of, you know, gets some cuts from fear and societal uh, pressures, especially in this given circumstances with the economy is falling down, etc. And then the third is please have uh, goals. You have dreams, 
but you need to turn these dreams into very crafted, very detailed goals. Maybe these goals, targets, will replace each other every week. You go like, okay, this week I'm going to do this. This month I will try to achieve this. This year I'm going to do this. My company, I have my daily goals or my, my, my weekly targets or my monthly or my yearly budgeting. So see yourself as a company and have the, these very, very carefully selected goals. And the fourth one is please work hard. Whatever you do, this is the key essence that we always omit. Whatever you want to do. If you want to become an artist, you need to practice 16 hours a day. There is no other way. You want to become an athlete? You think the Ronaldo just plays football from, from match to match? This guy plays 20 hours football every day, even though in, on, on, on PlayStation. He goes home and he plays PlayStation. He, he chooses himself and plays PlayStation. <laughs> but then the fifth one is please be positive. We all need to have some positive approach to things. So please know yourself. Please have big dreams and please put targets. Please work really hard and please be positive because positivity creates more uh, you know, more, more, more uh, be a beautiful aura around you and you probably feel better about yourself and you become a happier person when you look things in a positive way. So I think I can summarize that in five. So actually positivity can bring some chance, <laughs> maybe. So if you look <laughs> at it that way, so it yeah. can bring you more opportunities. So I think that's a good summary. Yes. Uh, thank you a lot. But by the way, there, there is one person, Tuba. Uh, she's raising hands. Okay, Tuba, one one last question from you, and then we can we can finish uh, this lecture. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello. I I was gonna ask you about. Um, do you do you ever feel like you have a mission in as an as an entrepreneur? I'm asking you this because you told that you've been to Stanford and I'm, I'm sure you've seen many, um, many great projects there and you have made a great project in Turkey and you said you have a lot to do. Yeah. Um, so I was wondering, so what's the next step? And also what do you want to leave to, to this world? So you have created a value and I'm sure you're planning to create much, much more values in, in the coming future. But when you think of um, the bigger perspective, what's the, what's the great mission of your entrepreneurship and your, your vision? Uh, I want to change Turkey for, uh, for good. One day, I think us, this young entrepreneurial society, will have a bigger responsibility to change the course of Turkey into more technological, more scientific, and more innovative society. So the, the political situation in countries, like not only Turkey, around the world, is creating political leaders, obviously. And those political leaders create uh, the, the vision and maybe a roadmap. But, I think in near future, this political leadership will be shared with entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial leadership. Like these big companies with big visions, with new technologies, will drive the humanity uh, even, even further. And I want to be one of those people for Turkey. I want to drive the country into future, in, 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 in short uh, summary. What should we do to your employee? <laughs> oh, I mean it, haha. Okay, Imran, send me your CV, please. <laughs> send it to sartach at paladin.com. Okay, who, okay, who would like to work for Paladin? Please send the CV to Sartach or let me know about it. I'll contact you. Yeah. Okay, uh, Valla, I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, it's that touch actually. It was fun talking to you. So always, this time, always uh, pleasure. Me too, as well. And actually, actually, you know, we 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 start we started a political party as well. So I hope we'll oh, yes. we'll disrupt. <laughs> yeah, I hope we'll disrupt it from the very beginning. We are talking to each I other. I never met it. No, no, no. <laughs> your your in your situation, uh, you know, I'm always uh, in your side, bro.
Thank you. Thanks a lot. So we'll do it together and hopefully uh, our students uh, will help, will be part of this as well. Hopefully. Uh, Raif demiş ki Sertaç Bey etrafımda insanlar var. Argoyu azaltsak keşke biraz. Arkadaşlar özür dilerim. Ben böyle e, arada bir galeyana geliyorum. Sürçülüğünü lisan ettikse affola. E, kimimizin evet, mikrofonu insanlar da dinliyor olabilir tabii ki. Evet. E, ama güzel, çok keyifli oldu. Sizlerle beraber olmak benim için de büyük bir keyif. Türkiye'yi sizler kurtaracaksınız arkadaşlar. Çok teşekkürler, çok sağ ol. Güzel bir ilham Aynen. kaynağı olarak güzel Aynen. bir şey oldu. Eyvallah. Kaydettik de bunu inşallah paylaşırız. Evet Hı. arkadaşlar şimdi bir... <gülüyor> ya biraz keseriz oraları, bipleriz abi oralarda. <gülüyor> Orada Aynen. bipleriz. Kolay gelsin. Çok teşekkürler, çok sağ ol. Aynen. Görüşmek Aynen. üzere. Tamam, hoşçakal, bay bay. Ee, arkadaşlar biz de şimdi bir ara veriyoruz. Ee, saat 6'da yeniden buluşuyoruz. Saat 6'da, so we meet back at 6 p.m. So now we have a break. Uh, we meet back at 6 p.m. with our other guest from San Francisco. Okay, now it's break time. Hocam bir şey sorabilir miyim? Tabii ki. Uh, bu Zoom'da 40 dakikadan sonra otomatikman atıyor bizi diğer derslerimize de. Siz ayrıyetten para mı verdiniz yoksa üniversitenin Yo. imkanı var mı bunu sınırsız yapmak için? Üniversitenin bu imkanı var. Faydalanmayı bilenler kullanıyor. Tamam, teşekkürler. Tamam, diğer diğer hocalar pek farkında değil bunun galiba. Hepsine söylemezseniz sevinirim hocam. <gülüyor> Bana soranlara söylerim artık. Tamam hocam sağ olun. Tamam oldu. Arkadaşlar 6'da görüşürüz. Tamam hoşçakalın.